Uh, as a starting point, it might be useful for the audience to hear a bit about your project and the role of automation in your work. Kane, would you like to kick us off with this? Sure. Um, so, you know, for those of you who don't know, Synthetix uh, allows you to get exposure to a range of different assets on Ethereum. Um, it's a fairly complex smart contract suite, and um, you know, we were lucky to work with Chainlink early um, to implement their um, oracles uh, to support the network. Uh, but you know, over the intervening two years, I think it's been now since we've been um, live. Uh, you know, we've added a lot of new functionality, and and there's a lot of um, uh, aspects of the system that require uh, you know intervention. Um, and so uh, we have a number of aspects of the the protocol um, that you know on a weekly basis, um, some bot or some keeper needs to come in and make a transaction based on you know some information that's on the blockchain, um, and it's just not possible to uh, to kind of automate those things um, uh, with you know simple payments. Um, so we've been talking to Chainlink about, um, you know, taking over a lot of that infrastructure as they do with our oracles, um, because we want, you know, a, a streamlined and simple uh, interface for, for all of these different um, aspects of the system that need to be maintained. Awesome. Thank you for that, Kane. Ernesto, would you like to cover Ave? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, for, for those who don't know uh, what, what AVE is, AVE is a liquidity protocol where people can uh, supply assets to get yield on them or, or borrow them. Uh, and in general, it's, it's a pretty like uh, a standalone running protocol, let's say, in the sense that it doesn't need uh, so, so much automation, at least in, in multiple points. But there are certain, uh, certain aspects, like, for example, the liquidations where... Uh, where actually uh, automation can be can improve the system by orders of magnitude. So uh, another another point is also like in, in certain parts where the where the computation are, are quite heavy and potentially it could be a rare architecture to introduce other parties that uh, do some kind of automation to uh, to optimize the cost. So yeah, pretty exciting to to see how how is going to look the other ecosystem like in the future with uh, with intervention of keepers. Perfect. Thank you. And so, Peter? Yeah, so so for those who don't know, Chainlayer is a node operator on the Chainlink network. Uh, we're also a staking service provider on a lot of networks. And uh, I think um, Keeper for us enables us to do a whole lot of automation on things we now run in various crowns, um, various systems, and especially the security aspect of it is, is uh, amazing. Um, if you run a a script that has to do something on chain. You basically need a private key somewhere. Or you need to secure it with ledgers or difficult things. And with Keeper, uh, that whole part of security is basically outsourced to the node operators. Um, we like to dog food uh, a chain link as node operators. And this is a perfect example of, uh, of, of things we can do ourselves. So yeah, really excited. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Brenda, would you like to go next? Yeah. Thanks, Anoush. Um, so I'm Brennan from Pool Together, and Pool Together is a prize savings game. So users deposit into a prize pool, interest accrues, and that interest is awarded as a prize. And so the prizes are awarded periodically. We use Chainlink for two things. One, the Chainlink VRF to you get a random number to select the winner or multiple winners. And two, we need that reward triggered periodically. And in fact, it can be triggered by anyone, but you know, um, as Peter said, we effectively need a cron job to run it. Um, but what we can do now is have the protocol cover the cost of rewarding the transactions, because of course that's, that needs to be paid for and, uh, and have it managed all by the chain link keepers. So it's a really effective system for us to be able to uh, outsource that, which we try to do as much as possible. We don't want to run servers. Understandable, understandable. Uh, Max, would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, so Barnbridge is a risk tokenization protocol, meaning that we build applications that go after specific risks users in DeFi are trying to you know, alleviate or get more exposure to. Uh, we rely on Chainlink Keepers primarily for our smart exposure application, which allows anyone to create a pool uh, between any two assets, any ratio they'd like, uh, that will constantly rebalance uh, kind of around the parameters of that pool. Um, so that might be, you know, 5% deviation from the ratio between the two assets on a daily basis. 
Uh, and when that deviation is triggered, you know, a chain link keeper uh, can actually trigger uh, the swap necessary to bring things uh, back to parity with uh, the kind of established ratio of the given pool.